Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing a product, uh, this one, the Utri Jump Starter JSTAR 3. So it's pretty unusual for me to review products on this channel, but every now and then uh, I come across a product that I'm interested in and somebody sends me, yep, I've been sent this one, and uh, I'm prepared to review it if it's something that is appropriate, something that I have been considering acquiring myself. But this is not a paid promotion. I have not agreed to give them a positive review. So it will be my opinion. It will be my honest, genuine thoughts as per all my other videos. So anyway, what is a 12 volt battery booster jump starter? Well, it's basically if you're in the situation that I found myself in a couple of months ago where I'd gone out uh, and parked the car into a field, I'd gone off to do some filming, came back to the car four hours later and it was dead. My car was a Kona Electric, an electric car, but electric cars are just like diesel and petrol, they run on a 12 volt battery. So if you leave the ignition on too long, the radio on too long, your doors open, or you've got a fault of some description, the 12 volt battery can run down so low that it won't start the car because without the 12 volt battery, it doesn't matter whether you've got an electric car or a petrol or a diesel, you can't start your car unless the 12 volt battery has enough power. Even if your electric car has a capability where it monitors the 12 volt battery and then realizes it's low and boosts it from the high voltage to the 12 volt battery, you'd think you're completely covered. Well, that system was on the Kona Electric as well and yet it still failed. Um, it wasn't a battery fault in that instance because um, I did then drive the car and had no issues with the car thereafter. So it was just a case that it run low from me or the car doing something on a one-off occasion that ran the battery down. So all cars, all vehicles, whether it's a van, whether it's a car, whether it's a motorbike, they all run on 12 volt batteries and they're all susceptible to faults and issues where the battery goes flat and you need a jump start. In my case with the Kona Electric, I had to go for a walk because I had no mobile signal, call for the recovery van and wait an hour for them to turn up. And when they turned up, I did ask the question, whether they were using um, the actual battery on the van and jump start cables, or whether he was using a booster box like you can buy, like one of these. And he said to me, well, it is like one of these. It's just bigger and more expensive, more industrial. So it'll provide more charges in a row. If he has to charge and boost lots of cars in one go in a day, then he's got enough power to do it. Whereas this, this is designed not to do multiple cars, not to be used for a professional purpose, but it's designed to be carried in a private vehicle for the one-off instance that your car needs a jump start. So anyway, that's the purpose of them. These are not to charge your high voltage battery in an electric car. Um, I can't believe I'm having to say that, but uh, I was amazed that uh, an admin on an online forum actually thought I was having a joke when I was asking about these products. Uh, how he misunderstood, I don't know. It's a 12 volt battery booster not a high voltage battery booster. So let's get that clear. And yes, they do work with electric cars, petrol and diesel. I must admit the company um, that sent me this, um, when I said I had an electric car, they said, oh no, 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 it's not compatible with those. And they obviously don't really know much about electric cars because a 12 volt battery on a car is a 12 volt battery on a car. It's the same voltage, it's the same system. It is exactly the same, so they do work. And uh, we'll do a bit of a test outside on both. I've got two cars outside, a mini petrol and a mini electric. We'll test it on both of them. But obviously what I can't do is I can't test whether it would start them because one, I'm not sufficiently electrically qualified to, to disconnect or discharge our 12 volt battery outside and then give it a boost. I wouldn't be confident in doing that without potentially causing some damage somewhere. So I'm not gonna be able to test the ultimate test of this. Will it start a, a car with a flat battery? But I can check and let you know everything else. So anyway, let's have a look. Let's have a look and see what we've got inside. Well, we have one case. That's, um, that's a pretty nice case. Uh, Quality-wise of the case feels feels pretty much the same as the case that I use on my Mavic Mini uh, drone. So, very nice case. Inside, we have um, some jump start cables. So this end uh, with a block on here, this is the intelligent device. I'll talk about that in a moment. That plugs into the jump starter and uh, black on black, red on red on the terminals of your battery of your car and away you go. Also, we have a manual. We have a USB cable, so this is for charging the battery. And then the device itself. Let's see if we can get that out. 
And there we have it. It's, well, you can see the size of it fitting in the palm of my hand. It's, it's pretty chunky, pretty heavy. Um, I'm really impressed with these plastic edges and these red edges. They are really soft rubber, so you can get a good grip on it. So I presume that's what they're for. So you can hang on to this and position it, move it around, and uh, you won't slip even in wet conditions. So um, I'm quite impressed with that. Then you've got a flap under here that opens up and you have your socket here, your USB-C for charging. You have two USB uh, outputs, so one's at 2.1, I think, I think it says on here, one's at 2.1 amps and one's at 1 amp uh, and they're all 5 volts. So 5 volt, 1 amp on USB 1, 5 volt, 2.1 amps output on USB 2. And apparently this can kick out 1600 amps. That's a lot of amps. This also says that it's 20,000 milliamp hours in capacity. So what I've done, uh, I did a test with my Anker battery. So this battery charges mobile phones and tablets. This doesn't charge a car, but it will charge phones and tablets with those USB outputs. It boosts a 12 volt battery. It doesn't charge the 12 volt battery, it boosts it. So anyway, this Anker battery um, is 16,000 milliamp hours. This is supposed to be 20,000 milliamp hours. What I did was empty this out completely. So I plugged it into a work light and drained it completely down. I'd already pre-charged this to full and I then charged this to this until this was empty. And I was interested in what percentage this one would get to, the U-Try, when this was empty. So 16,000 emptied itself completely when this said 70%. So I thought that was pretty good. Um, I don't know whether that equals to exactly 20,000 or anywhere near. Um, obviously there's gonna be some losses in charging between the two. So uh, I'm less concerned about capacity. These things are more about what they can put out instantaneously in power to get that car started. It's not about the capacity. So long as it can turn over and start a car, that's all you want it for. So anyway, let's not get confused between the two. Just because they're small, just because they've got lithium batteries in, this thing, is configured to power really low voltage, really low amps, to charge mobile phones and tablets. This is designed inside, probably with completely different cell types that are inside. Maybe, maybe not, I really don't know. Um, but it's designed to kick out a lot more amps to start a car with. So that's why they're different. That's why you shouldn't get confused and think, oh, this you know, can't be, it's supposed to be some giant box with wires. No, there's enough power in this <laughs> to start a car. And uh, that's what's quite impressive because it's so portable. Um, weight wise, it's about twice the weight. So if you've got one of these um, batteries that charges your mobile phone, this is 16,000 milliamp hours. This is about twice the weight. Um, this is about 1.1, 1.2 kilos in weight uh, when I weighed it. Uh, what else can I say about it? I really do like the solidness of it. It feels like a nice solid device. It really holds securely in your hand. It's the right sort of width for palm usage. So it feels secure, that's good. The flap really does, yeah, it's nice and secure. I've opened that a few times. So I'm quite happy with that. It doesn't look like it's going to break within five minutes. The whole thing feels quite well built. The plastics aren't flimsy. I'm pressing on it. There's no, oh, had a creak there, but there's no, there's no bending of anything. It feels like really, really solid device. So for the money, uh, and I'm not sure what price this is, whether it's 65, 75 pounds in that region available on Amazon, um, I'll put a link in the description. Again, this is not a paid promotion. Uh, I've just been sent this device to review. I've not been paid in any way to give this a positive review. So on the outputs and inputs on here, what you've got is um, the two USBs, as I said, for outputs, and you've got the USB-C for the input for charging, and then you've got the socket at the end. It is that way around. Plugs in there like that. Good, strong, solid fit. That wasn't gonna fall out in a hurry. So as well as all of that functionality, um, you've also got the uh, light. Yes, there's a light on the front. And depending on how many times you change the button, it flashes differently. So a nice handy light, and uh, I do like the screen. It's nice to know what the battery percent is, how full the battery is. Uh, it is 100%, I've fully charged it. But there's also some more information on there. Um, as you plug things in to charge or to um, charge the phones or whatever from it, 
it does tell you what's going on and which USB is being used, etc. And uh, that I quite like. Um, it seems quite intelligent. So it's showing you what's going on. And also there's a screen on here as well, which we'll cover in the specifications later. Um, that uh, illuminates with different codes and tell you what's going on as well. And it's got some protection in here. So if you do plug the black on the red by accident, etc., it's going to tell you and uh, it doesn't do any damage to you or the device. So yeah, this seems all right. Uh, it looks like it does the job. If you want to carry a booster to protect yourself from um, having a flat battery, then this is, I suppose, what you'd be looking at buying. It's small, it's manageable, it's not too heavy, it comes in a good case, it's got all the right components, it's even got an emergency light, it does what you need to do. So anyways, let's have a look at the specifications and walk you through exactly what this one does. So starting with this smart clamp then, it shows the voltage of the battery, it shows an indication whether you've got overheating, whether you've got reverse charging, a short circuit, or um, an over voltage or a connection malfunction. I've described all these features, capacities and outputs before, but I do know on this image it says EC5 output port. So EC5 must be the technical name for this style of output. The LED light has three modes. It's got normal light, strobe and SOS. I guess it flashes in Morse code. So using the device, that seems quite simple. You plug the smart cables, the smart box into the jump starter device. Then you plug the uh, alligator clips, the black onto the black terminal, the red onto the red terminal. So that's black goes on to the negative and red goes on to the positive. Then you start your car. Uh, don't turn it over for ages and ages though, because that could generate some extra heat that you don't want. And then when your car started, remove it straight away. So let's have a go with the smart cable. Let's plug it onto my Mini, which is a 1.5 petrol. So red on red, black on black. And again, this is not connected to the jump starter, just the cable. 12.1 volts, 12.2 volts. And just for curiosity, let's try it on my Mini Cooper SE. This is the electric Mini. No petrol, no diesel, just an electric motor and a battery. Not sure if you can see on this, but 12.4, 12.5 volts. One final test, let's uh, do the same again. Let's have a look at the voltage on the battery, but this time have the cable actually connected to the jump starter. It's 12.2 volts again. So with it on, it's not drawing any more current. It's not doing anything. So it's uh, inactive until we uh, press the start button on the car. So the big question, do I recommend buying one of these Utri J-Star 3 battery jump starters, 12 volt battery jump starters? And the answer to that is, do you know, I think so. Um, I've been advised by other people I talk to, don't buy cheap, and this isn't one of the cheapest out there. Um, they're also saying don't buy ones that aren't very heavy, so they haven't got the right batteries inside. Yeah, this, this feels solid enough um, and it does feel good enough quality. So yes, I would be happy to be buying a jump starter just like this one. So yeah. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope this was useful if you're thinking about getting one of these. And uh, I definitely recommend it if you've got an electric car at least because they do seem more prone to having 12 volt battery faults. I've never had a 12 volt battery fault in my life and I've owned a couple of dozen cars and motorbikes. Uh, and yet the first electric car I have and that has battery protection so that it will top up the 12 volt battery from the high voltage. I had a 12 volt battery failure. Is that a coincidence? Um, I don't think so because there seems to be quite a few people out there saying it's quite common. So especially for electric car owners, these will save you that walk in the rain, that waiting for the recovery truck and give you all the convenience of knowing that you can get yourself going wherever you are without any delay. 
I guess if you don't want one of these, you don't want to protect yourself, what you definitely need is a recovery policy. You need an insurance policy that will call out the AA or Green Flag or RAC, whoever, and get you started if you do break down. As always, thanks for watching. I uh, hope that was useful. Um, if you've got one of these, I'd love to hear from you whether you've had to use it. I'd love to hear from you what your thoughts are. If you haven't got this product, what product have you got and what do you think? I'd love to see that in the comments too. Anyway, thank you again for watching. Hope it was useful. See you again soon. Bye for now.